Okay, literally, this is take five. And so I think last time I said it was take five, but it was really only take four. But I can look and see that it's take five. Um, everybody has called me, and uh, so I think that no one else will call me. And so let's get to this video. And um, where's my mouse? There it is, paper view. Okay, so I had to even get new paper because I had started out and, um, and whatnot. So I was able to print it in color, which makes me actually happier. And so um, we're going to be doing volumes by slicing. And uh, that's what the section 5.2 is about. And, um, and so some creative math teachers have made, they made out of Play-Doh, um, um, some kind of a shape, and then they spliced it up. And kind of the idea, sliced it up, and kind of the idea is that you can find the volume by finding the volume of this piece, which if I cut it, if I slice it paper thin, would be the area of the face of it, right? The area of the face of it times how thick it is. That's how you find volume, is you find the area and then times how thick it is. And so like if I wanted to find the volume of this, um, of this nickel, uh, what I would do was I would find the area of this, of the circle, and I would multiply by how thick it is, and that would be the volume of the of the nickel and so that's what we're going to be doing and uh, the idea is is that we're going to use the integral to sum them up so we have you know the volume of this slice the volume of this slice the volume of this slice and we're going to add all those volumes up and so another creative person sliced the apple pretty thin and um and so uh to show and that they're going to find the the volume of that and and so you can have the shape be anything, um, any shape that you have would be okay. Um, and then you find the area and multiply by how thick it is. And then you add all those pieces up. What we're gonna be doing in the class, they have others in your book. They have ones that are triangles and rectangles and um, also squares, but we're only gonna look at circular ones. And so, and those are called the solids of revolution. And those are the main ones that they're talking about. And so, but we're not gonna get sidetracked by all the others uh, that, they, um, that they have. And so, um, so the idea, the general slicing method is that you can find the volume by integrating, which means sum up. Remember the integral sign is a big S, which means sum, by summing up the volume of the, the pieces. So that, and we're gonna do things that are, um, that are circular, so that they have a center, and some of the things that we will we'll do will be solid, and some of the things will not be solid. And so the first ones we're gonna look at are gonna be solid, and, um, and so, and the idea is that I'm gonna slice this wafer thin, um, and then I'm gonna find the volume of each piece. And um, if I start with something that is circular, that when I um, find the, you know, when I slice it wafer thin and they might not all be the same size, you know, I'll find the volume of this, which is the area times how thick it is. And then they'll find the area of this, which is the, vo um, the area times how thick it is. And then they'll find the volume of this, the area times how thick it is, the volume of this one, the area times how thick it is, and the volume of this one, the area times how thick it is, and then I'll add them all together. And what makes it a good estimate, again, just like what we saw in chapter four, uh, when we were trying to find the area under the curve, and we said that what we were gonna do is slice it into a whole bunch of rectangles and then add those rectangles up. Well, what makes it a good uh, approximation or a perfect is to do um, a lot of rectangles. So here, if you only made five slices, and um, then it doesn't even look like a sphere. So they started off with a sphere and they said, fine, let's find the volume by slicing. And um, because you know this one slice is all the same piece size, just like my coins are, right? And, um, and so it doesn't even look like a sphere, uh, but you can t tell that it 
it was, you know, something kind of spherish. If you do, tw um, this was 10 slices, and th this picture is in your book, um, it looks more like a sphere. And this is with 20 slices, and it looks even better like a uh, sp sphere. So you could imagine that if you did infinitely it, many, it would be perfect. And that's kind of the idea. And um, they used to have, but my son was explaining to me how Adobe tech is now gone adobe flash or whatever have you is gone and they used to have in our book they used to had animations that went with the book and the last time i made videos um uh, was four years ago and they had am animation and i was able to show those animations on my computer and i was like why won't they work now and i could actually change this to be whatever i wanted and um and they haven't gotten they haven't got anything new there and I, I loved it though because you could make it a thousand and then it you couldn't tell that it was even sliced at that point okay so here's the idea of how we're going to make our circular and so i'm going to go oh how did I do that? I don't even know what I did. Uh, somehow I made it not, uh, made it turn off. But this is how we're going to make our cir circular, is we're going to start off with some function. And, uh, and that gives us some um, region from A to B. And we're going to rotate that region around an axis. In the case of this example right here, they're rotating it around the X axis. And so when we do that, we create something that when we slice it, um, that we get disks. So if this is a solid, and so they're drawing here a solid, that we get these disks. And, and, and so as that rotated around that axis, that, and I, you know, get it over here, and um, that becomes that disk. And, and I'm gonna find the volume of that disk, and I'm gonna add it with the volume of this disk. And as I, as I come along here, the disks are all different sizes. And so here we have big, we have bigger ones here and then the smaller ones going there. So that's kind of the idea. So that when I come here and I take this thing and I take my scissors and I slice it and I pull this out where I slice that, it will be, that slice will be a circle. Now it's possible that you can create something that when you slice it, that you get squares, but all the ones we're going to be looking at, um, in the book from our book are the ones that are circles. So they do go into, if you are, if you're a book reader, um, they do go into others as well. And then the volume would be the area of the circle. So the area of the circle times the thickness. And the area of the circle is pi r squared. And how thick it is, is delta x. I am going to determine how thick it is. And then you remember how you, how you approximate delta x is with dx. And, um, and so you're kind of seeing that, and then I'm going to integrate that. And so this is going to be my area dx is what I'm going to have. Okay. So the method that we're going to be looking at is the, the disk method. And uh, because we're going to be, when we slice it, we get disks. And so this is the basic strategy of what's going to go on here. And so it matters if you're rotating around the X axis or the Y axis. So we'll start off with the X axis or a line parallel to the X axis. And so what you have to do if you're rotating about that is your equations uh, for your function. So here's my function right here, have to be solved for y, okay? And then I wanna make a graph of it, and it actually is more important that I could make this kind of a graph than making this kind of a graph. Now they asked me to make this graph and to make this graph, and um, I will try to make these, but I have a real hard time making them look uh, like they've been rotated around the axis and they look, um, you know, uh, look, uh, three-dimensional when uh, it's on a two-dimensional paper. So I have a hard time with that, but I'll do my best on it. And then you'll notice that really you only need this. And so since I only need that two-dimensional graph, I get lazy and not even draw that. And, um, and so anyway, then what you want to do, uh, and so you graph your equations, so you're just sketching it out, and then you want to draw your typical radius. 
And so your radius goes from your center. So when I pulled this out and it was circular, my radius goes from the center right here to the edge. And so I don't know if you notice, but um, I'll try to draw in the same place. That's right here. That's where the radius is, right? And I tried to draw it perpendicular to the axis of rotation there. And I know it's not perfectly drawn, but that's my radius. That's the reason I don't really need um, to have a, a perfectly drawn drawing like this is because all I need is my drawing to help me find my radius. And uh, because I'm going to integrate pi is a constant, all I need to know is the radius. And once I know the radius, I'm in business. Okay, and so then the volume can be found by integrating from A to B of your area with respect to x dx, which is pi r squared dx. On the other hand, if you're rotating about the y-axis or something parallel to the y-axis, then your equations need to be solved for x. And then you want to make a graph, and then you want to come up with your typical r, and then you want to set up your set up your integral that will be um, remember your your uh, equations are solved for what um, your equations need to be solved for x so you're right in here you'll have in terms of y dy and then you'll integrate that so these are up and down and these are on their side uh, just like that we had when we were doing the areas from the previous section so we're going to give a whirl at this uh, that's funny huh because we're rotating and so give a whirl is funny okay and so um, here they're asking me to set up the integral to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating, and that's these are called um, volumes of revolution because they are found by rotating something about an axis. And the axis, either the x-axis, the y-axis, or a line parallel to the x-axis, or a line parallel to the y-axis. Um, I suppose that you could do lines that are not parallel to the axis, but we don't, and so we're not going to we're not going to worry about those. And so, um, and they're telling us that, hey, what they want us to do is they want us to sketch the region and then try to draw the solid and then draw a typical disc or washer. We're not doing washers. We're doing discs right now because we're, we're having a solid and then um, uh, evaluate the integral uh, to find the volume. Okay, so we need to graph these um, three curves and I know two of them are lines and one of them's a curve. And so, um, and I don't really need to pick points on these, uh, but if it's helpful to you, sometimes it's helpful to pick points. So I would wanna pick X is zero, cause that's gonna find the vertex of that half parabola, right? When you graph the square roots, half a parabola. So when I pick zero, I get zero. When I pick one, I get one. When I pick four, I'm picking perfect squares on perfect purpose, I get two. And um, I'm gonna sketch this right here. And I'm um, sketching it a little lighter than I did the last uh, four times that I did because uh, I couldn't erase it off the paper when someone phone, phone call, called me. And these videos, I don't know how to edit. And so since I don't know how to edit, it, it's one take <laughs> is what it is. And when I was, uh, when I did know how to edit them, which at, at one time in my life I did, it took so long that it wasn't even possible to make them. So anyway, so I'm at zero, zero, and I am made this distance one. So this is one, one, and then at four, two. And so here is my sketch in here. Okay, so to the best of my ability, then I also have the line y equals zero, which is the x-axis. So right in here is the x-axis. Oh, gosh, how can I, how could I have messed that up? But you know, Okay, and then we have the line x equals one. So there's, here it is, x equals one. And then the region that's trapped by all of these, so I actually can erase this part of it because that's not part of what's being trapped. So I can kind of narrow that back. And this is the region that's being trapped. I just put dots in it to show that that's a solid region there. And then I'm gonna be rotating that region around the x-axis. So when I spin it around the x-axis, it's going to look like, and I'm gonna draw that over here because they wanted me to try to draw uh, to the best of my ability, of course. They wanted me to draw my, um, my solid. And so there is my solid to the best of my ability over there. 
And um, if I start slicing the solid, so I start slicing it, slice, 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 and I'm gonna make infinitely many slices, and I'm gonna find the volume of each one of those slices. Well, when I slice it, because this is was revolved around the axis, it's going to make, when I slice it, each slice is going to be a circle of different, uh, a disc is what it's called, and these coins are discs of different sizes. And, um, and so that's, that's kind of the, uh, kind of the idea on that. And so, um, what, so I don't really need this picture over here. So, um, anyway, so when I set up, when I go to set up my integral, uh, my integral is, um, for my volume is equal to, um, pi r squared dx. So all I have to do is find out what r is. And once I find out what R is, uh, I'll set up my bounds, and then I will be able to um, uh, I will be able to find the the volume of this shape right here. And what it kind of looks like, and I went and got this out of my kitchen um, to me, and so I have to put my hand over that part because it doesn't have that part. But I think that that that's sort of what it looks like, right? It is, but it's solid, and um, and so. Um, Anyway, a funnel it is what it's kind of, it doesn't have the hole in it probably at the bottom there. I mean, it's not, but that's kind of what it looks like, a solid funnel. And, um, and so anyway, okay, and we're trying to find the volume of that. So how you find your radius is the radius, um, you always draw your radius um, from, the radius goes from the axis of rotation to your curve. So it's going in your solid. So I want to, that's what your, that's what your radius is. And, um, and so there's one statement in the book that says it's always your function. And I'm going to show you today in examples that we have that it's not. And so they make that statement, but it's not right. And so, uh, and, and they, they kind of expect you to adjust if you're going around the x-axis, then it is just your function. And so, but if you're going around something other than the x-axis, it's not. And they're going to have us go around things other than the x-axis. But uh, I like to go and draw a typical radius. And that's what they asked me to draw. You know, they said a typical disc. And so I'm going to draw the typical radius. And so you start at the axis of rotation and you go through your solid to the other side. And that is R. And I'm only drawing one of them. Uh, and there are infinitely many. And the infinitely many go from zero all the way here to one. And um, then I'm going to draw the disc that goes with that right here. And so here's the little disc that goes with it right there. And I'm trying to make it look like it's circular there. And, and so when I pull that disc out, right? And I pull that disc out and I look at it, it's circular. And so that's kind of what I got going. And so um, in this case, because I'm going around the x-axis, the radius is just my curve. And um, I'm going from here to here. And so my, this is the curve that we are, that we have. And remember, I want my stuff in terms of r. So this distance that I have from r that's going from the x-axis to a point that distance is called y, and, uh, and that distance is also called r, that we're calling it, and that distance is also the square root of x, because, this, because it's hitting the curve, y equals the square root of x. So we kind of have this story, that r equals, I'm going to put y equals the square root of x. And the reason that I want to use x when I put it in my formula is because in this equation here that I'm going to integrate, I only want to have x's because it's dx. So I don't want to have any y's and I don't want to have anything else. All I want to have is x's. That's the variable of interest, x. And so that's good because that's what r is. r is that distance, which any distance that goes vertically from the x-axis to a point is called y. Because it's going to the curve y equals the square root of x, that distance is either, you can either call it y or the square root of x. And I want to call it the square root of x because I want to use x. And so my x's are going to run from 0 to 1. And I've drawn this one looking a little bit more than half. So this one is like at x equals 0 0.6. And so that radius at that particular point is the square root of 0 0.6 is what it is. 
Okay, so we're going to put this in. So our volume will equal the integral of pi times rr is the square root of x squared dx. And good news, I haven't put bounds on there yet, but I am going to. Good news, um, the square root of x squared is x. So that's easy to integrate. And the pi can go out in front, right, because it's a constant. And so this would be x dx. So that's a pretty easy one to integrate. And now I'm going to run back and get my bounds. And so where I could draw my r's, I could have drawn, drawn them from x is 0 all the way to x is 1. And that's where I would be slicing it to find the volume. All of those places from 0 to 1. And I'm going to make infinitely many slices from 0 to 1. And so my bounds would go from 0 to 1 for x. And so x goes from 0 to 1. And so here, 0 to 1. And then now all I have to do is integrate. So this is going to be the volume equals pi. And I'm just going to try not to forget the pi. You'll notice me forgetting the pi. And then you'll have to yell, don't forget the pi. So x squared divided by 2. And I'll say, um, is there going to be any ice cream with that pi? Um, and no, that's just a joke. So 0 to 1, right? And so up bound minus low bound. And so our, our volume is going to be pi times. And then we're going to have our up bound, which is 1 over 2, minus our low bound, which is 0. And, um, and so this one has a volume that is pi over 2. Okay, so we did the whole process there. And, um, and I said that this kind of looked like uh, something like this that was, um, you know, so sliced off here and then solid is what that it kind of kind of look like. I have all these, I have all these things that are round here that we can kind of look at, which is, um, which is kind of silly, but that's what I have kind of going. Okay. So now we're going to do example, the next example. So this is example 16 out of your book and we're still on the disc method. And, um, and, and actually things are what they are. And so since we only have one method right now, um, um, uh, we're looking at all the disks, but I'll show you why the next things have to be washers. And then in the next video, I'll show you why the next things have to be shells. And so, uh, and what a shell is. And, and so it says, set up the integral to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating. And so they want me to make all these sketches. So all the same things. And here now they're saying about the Y axis. And so I have to draw this is what I have to draw. And, um, and then, um, and so um, I would pick points to make sure that I drew that, but I know th um, that that is a parabola on its side is what that is. I probably even would uh, solve it for X uh, is probably what I would do. Uh, I would prefer to solve it for X than to solve it for Y. Now, remember what we said, that if we were going around the Y axis, right, and I'm going to just go back here, right here, right, and we said that if we were going around the Y axis, our equations need to be solved for X. And so um, I'll get you a way of, of remembering that uh, in the next video when we have the contrast of all of them. Um, and so uh, I'm going to just go ahead and solve this equation for x right now because I am going around the y-axis. So this is going to be x equals y divided by 2, y squared divided by 2. And I'm going to pick some points to graph it. So I'm going to pick y is 0 and then x would be 0. I'm going to pick y is 1, then x would be half. I'm going to pick um, negative 1. And then um, x would be half. I'm going to pick 2. 2 squared is 4. And then divided by 2 is 2. And I'm going to pick negative 2. And then I would also get 2. And so I'm going to graph, uh, plot these points there that I didn't seem to be able to draw that very evenly. But I'm going to plot these points. The other two are just lines. So as I do this, this is 0, 0. And then I'm going to be going over half and then up one. So I'm going to try to go here half up one. And then I'm going to be going over half and then down one. So that's precisely there. 
Okay. And, um, and I guess I do need, because I'm going to go to y is 4. So I'm only here at uh, y is 1. And so I tell, tell you that if I haven't graphed it lately, then I a lot of times make it too big. And so like right now, I'm like, oh, man, I made this too big. And so because I have to go all the way to y is 4, I, I'm noticing. And so I'm going to rescale. And, uh, and I apologize. Uh, but this is really how it goes, right? Um, I want this to fit in this spot. So I'm going to make this 4. Y is 4. I'm going to make this 2. I'm going to make that 1. And I'm going to make that same distance here 1. And so I'm going to go 0, 0, and then over half up 1, and then over half down 1, and over 2. So here is 1, and here is 2 up uh, 2 and down 2 and I feel like because I haven't quite reached y equals 4 and that's where I'm going to get tra stuff trapped right that's the idea and so I'm kind of going here and I'm going here and I'm looking at what region is going to be trapped. And then I'm going to rotate that region around the um, y-axis. And so um, I want, I'm probably going to need to find that intersection point. I think I might need to find that intersection point. Maybe I don't. So we'll see if I need it. And then so I have already drawn the line y equals 4. Um, and then the line x equals 0. And so when I do that, that's actually the y-axis. And so the, the region that's being trapped by those three curves, right, is that region right there. And so that's the region that's going to be rotated around the, the, around the y-axis. And so this is going to be, you know, flared out and it's going to rotate around. And so when I kind of, it kind of to me almost looks like a, a megaphone. Um, is what I'm thinking, where this is the end that you would be talking through, and then it gets wider over here. Um, not that, I mean, almost this is almost that same thing. I mean, the, the shape here is straight, but if this was curved out like that, then it would be kind of that same kind of deal when I rotate this around. I am not going to draw it in three dimensions. Uh, I'm imagining that if I rotated it around, that it would be over here. Um, and so now, because this one is about the y-axis, the integral that I'm setting up is um, not area, it's volume. Volume, did I put area on the other one? Better make sure. No, I did volume, yay, because it's supposed to be volume, and, and I just did area, so it made me wonder what I did. It is the, um, the, uh, the integral of pi r squared uh, dy. All of r's all of ours are pi r squared because we are going to be doing um, um, circles. All of ours are rotated about going around so it makes something circular like this is, right? So if I was looking down on this shape here, that's what it would look at, but it's solid. And so... Um, Anyway, so because I'm only having to worry about the circle, circle, circles, I know that it, my area is pi r squared. And so what I need to know is the radius. And how you find the radius, again, remember what I wrote about the radius over here. So the radius is, is um, when you go to draw it, is, uh, it equals, so I want to go from the axis of rotation to the curve. So now the axis of rotation is the y-axis, so I'm going to draw a typical radius, and it, the radius goes from the um, axis of rotation to my curve, and so that is my typical r. Now, because I'm going from the y-axis to the curve, that's, that's over, so that distance is called x. You know, when you plot an ordered pair, uh, you have your x distance, which is how far you go over, and you have your y distance, which is how far you go up. And so because I'm going over, um, that distance is called um, x. And x, in this case, is y squared over 2. And so it would be different if the axis of rotation 
was not the y-axis. But if it is the y-axis, then it's just your curve. It's your main curve. And so our radius, our radius is in this case equal to x, which is equal to y squared divided by 2. And, um, and so we're going to put that in. So our volume will be pi on the outside. And then um, radius squared, but we have y squared over 2, that's our radius squared dy. If you don't have variables that are the same going here, then you've messed up. And so uh, you need to readjust. So you can't have x's here and have dy. And you won't, don't want to just change your dy to dx because that's what you had. You want to make sure that you're using the right one and, uh, and get the right variables going. And now I'm going to figure out where I can draw all those radiuses, where I'm going to be making those slices. This time I'm slicing horizontal. And I'm going to be slicing from right here at zero, right? Slice, 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 right? I drew the typical R, but all of these are all different R's. And they have all different, um, they are all different links. And for each of their links, they depend on what the value for y is. And y goes from um, 0, because y equals uh, x equals y squared over 2. And so it depends on what y is. And so, um, and they go from 0 all the way up to y is 4. And so all those radiuses. So they go from 0 to 4. I love it when it's 0, because when I integrate it, then I don't have to worry about the 0, right? It's top bound minus low bound. But when it's 0, um, if you have polynomials, then you're going to have uh, y's in all of them, and that, that will be 0. The only time that I wouldn't have, that I wouldn't, that you wouldn't have 0 when you have 0 is if you had cosine, because cosine of 0 is not equal to 0, right? Cosine of 0 is equal to 1. But I'm not going to have cosine as my answer when I integrate this. So I don't have to worry about that. On this particular problem, I'm sure it will happen, and maybe even today. So I'm going to fix this up. So this is y to the fourth over 4 dy. And that 4 is going to hold still along with the pi. And it's 1 fourth is what it is, because it's in the denominator. So I'm going to have that my volume equals 1 fourth pi. I'm just move the 4 out. And then I'm going to integrate y to the fourth, which is y to the fifth over 5. And I'm going to evaluate that. Notice I'm not writing the integral sign anymore because I'm finding the integral from 0 to 4. So that my volume will be 1 fourth pi times uh, my upper bound, which is 4 raised to the fifth over 5, minus my lower bound, so there's my upper bound, minus my lower bound, which is 0. And that's pretty, I love it, I love it when it's 0. And uh, 4 to the fifth is big. I don't know what 4 to the fifth is. And, um, and so I'm, I'm getting a calculator because I don't know. And, um, and so I have the fraction here, uh, 4 raised to the fifth and then divided by 5. And then actually, I want to do 1 fourth of that, right? Because I have the 1 fourth here. So I think while I'm here, I'll put the 1 fourth there. I don't normally put um, pi in my calculator. Um, and I always give my answer in terms of pi. And, um, and so whatever I get here, pi. So 256 over 5, pi. So if we rotated it in such a way that we made squares, which there are some problems in your book that they do that, instead of rotating it to make circles like we did, rotating it around the axis like that, you make circles. Um, if they did somehow, and, and you, if you wanted to look at those problems, you can. I did not assign them. Uh, but if you wanted to look at those problems, you could. Then you wouldn't have pi in your answer uh, if you had squares. But because I have circles, and um, the uh, area of a circle is part has you know is pi r squared. I'm going to have pi, and so if you're asking, will pi be in all of your answers? And the answer is yes, uh, because I'm only doing circles. So here's another example. 
So it's asking me to do the same thing. It's asking me, um, they're asking me just to set these up and then evaluate the integral. And I told you that on the test, I would sometimes ask you just to set it up. And so if I'd asked you just to set it up, then uh, right here on that one would have been set up uh, because it's got the radius squared. And so you don't even have to square it. And you got the bounds zero to one. I got a lovely picture up here. So the rest of it, I wouldn't have needed to, to do. And uh, on this one, if I would have just said set up and not solve it, then uh, you could have ended right there, right? That would have been set up. And um, you got your bounds on there and you got your radius squared there. Uh, <coughs> you got your dy. And so uh, you don't need to square it if it says just set up. You can just leave it. Um, and so um, if you did square it, I would not mark you wrong. And so, um, and, and, and so a lot of times I'll ask people to just set it up and they'll solve it. And, um, and I know that other people get all crazy about that and they say, well, you didn't follow the, di the directions. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, well, you know, if they would have ended right here, they set it up. And I kind of draw a line and look, look there and not look underneath the line. Okay. So here they're asking me to set up the integral to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating a region. Uh, and so I'm gonna graph that region and then I'm going to rotate it and it's going to create something circular. So we have y equals x squared and y equals nine and about the line y equals nine is what we have this time. And I'm again saying set up only, but you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set it up and then I'm gonna solve it. And then just, just so that we have the practice on solving it. And I kind of recommended on the homework that you set up um, uh, them and you say, I can integrate that. And if you can't integrate it, if you're not sure how to integrate it, if you're like unsure of how to integrate it, then you practice integrating it. Okay. So when I graph this, uh, y equals x squared, I recognize that as a parabola. I told you that I wouldn't give you anything that is harder to graph than you graphed in math one. And in fact, I think I will probably be easier on the things that you need to graph. Uh, but um, uh, I'm kind of giving you some ideas of things that you should be able to graph. Um, and so definitely I think that you should be able to graph a parabola. And, um, and so I'm going to graph that parabola. I have picked points on it. Um, I just like mine so that I can see what's kind of going on. And, um, and so I, I do like to pick points on them. Uh, and I know that some people are like, um, uh, you know, you don't really have to pick all those points. I know my, my office mate, Arnie, who I love, love, love my office mate. He had been my office mate. It's not my office mate now. Uh, Dylan is, but, uh, I love, love, love him. He'd be like, Donna, why do you pick all those points? And, um, and so, uh, zero, zero, and then over one, up one and over one, up one. And, um, that's not quite level. And then over two, up four, so three, two, three, four, up four, here, shoom, and, and so here is kind of my basic sketch in here, I have the symmetry going, and um, I know that uh, looking at this, I need y equals nine, and that's a horizontal line, and here was four, that's not a very good four, but I'll make it a little bit better so it's clear that that's four, and so up here, and yeah, I got uh, carried away, as I do, would be nine. So we'll find where that intersects, but I'm sure you know where that intersects, right? So I'm graphed in here the line y equals nine. Here we go. And uh, we'll find where that uh, intersects if we need to find those points. And uh, we're going to rotate around the line y equals 9. And I don't seem to have that being a very nice line, um, but uh, I'm just going to rotate around that line. So around the line y equals 9. So you do, you, you do see that that has created, it has, um, it has uh, caught a region. And this region I'm going to make dotted here. So this region is that region and it's gonna get rotated around this axis. So it's gonna go around and around that axis. 
So as I'm kind of imagining what this crazy uh, shape would um, look like, um, it's kind of, to me, as it rotates around and it's, um, uh, it, it's kind of reminding me of one of those cookies, but I don't know what kind of cookie it is. Uh, but it's, that's what it's kind of reminding me of as it, it has that shape that's kind of rounded out like this and kind of pony to here. And, and so that's what I'm kind of thinking of it as. Do I need to have it drawn three-dimensionally? And the answer is really I don't. And so because I'm going around um, something that is parallel to the x-axis, then my integral for my volume will be dx. So pi r squared dx is what it will be. And, um, and so this is this line y equals nine is parallel to the x axis. And so that's how I have it memorized. So that when I do a disc, it will be dx because parallel x axis here. Now, um, back here, you know, on our spec, you know, um, the procedure, the procedure here, uh, if you're going around the x axis or parallel to the x axis, then it is dx. And so um, anyway, so that's how I have it memorized. So I'm looking at this and I know that I've drawn that to the best of my ability and that's a horizontal line. The x-axis is a horizontal line. So if it's horizontal, then when you do your disk method, you're gonna have dx. Okay, so now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna draw a typical R. And when you draw your typical R, you start at the axis of rotation. So right here, I'm at the axis of rotation and I'm gonna draw to my curve. And that is R right there. Okay, and so, but this time R is not equal to X squared. And so I just want, want you to know that. And so on, if I'm going around the Y axis, if I had been going around, excuse me, the X axis, then that's what it would have been. Uh, but because I'm going around a, a, an axis other than the X axis, I have to be a little bit more tricky. Uh, but I am gonna tell you this. Remember that the distance from the X axis to any point on a curve, that distance right there, that distance, is called y equals x squared, right? I can call that distance y, or I can call that distance x squared. Now, because I want to get r in terms of x, because dx, I wanna call it x squared. So this distance from the x-axis to my curve is called x squared. And um, I know that this distance right here from that curve all the way up to the line y equals nine, that's that line up there that I drew up there, y equals nine, that distance from here to here is called r. And so what I know then is that r plus x squared, so if you look at that, r plus x squared equals what distance? Yeah, equals nine but I wanted to know what R is. And so now I can know what R is. R equals nine minus X squared, right? And then now I'm, um, I'm in business as far as starting to set up my integral. So what things do I need to know to set up my integral when I have an axis, when I have something rotated like this, is I need to know R. That's the only thing I need to know. And I now know what R is. Not, R is not my curve, it's nine minus x squared. And so that's why I was hesitant to call it the curve when we were doing the others, um, because it's only your curve if you're going around the x-axis. So if you're going around something other than the, than the x-axis, you have to be tricky. So that's why I was saying, making this big deal, well, this is that distance, you know, that distance is y equals x squared when you're going from the x-axis to any point on a curve and uh, any point on the, this curve. Um, okay, so this is going to be our volume equals our integral, and I'm gonna put the pi on the outside, and then I'm gonna have nine minus x squared, squared, dx. 
And, um, and then I'm going to integrate this from where to where. And it's going to be in terms of X's. So I just imagine all the places I could have drawn those radiuses. So I could have drawn the radius here. I could have drawn the radius here, those radiuses here, all the way to that point right there. And so I said, if I need that point, I'll ask you and you can help me find that. And all the way over to here, right there, right? And so that's where my all my radiuses are going to go. From this point right here, which is an x value, x equals, and this is an x value over here, x equals. So that's where I want to go from. And so it's hitting this curve, um, y equals x squared, so that the y value is 9, is where it's hitting. And so it's, it's right here. I mean, I can solve it if I needed to, right? I have y equals x squared, that's the one curve, and y equals 9, and I want to know where they intersect. Well, they're both equal to 9, so it must be where x squared equals 9, which is at x equals plus or minus 3. Now, you probably knew that without solving, but the reason I've written this out so that you would know, it's where those two curves intersected one another, and if you couldn't guess the value, you could have solved it. And so anyway, it goes from negative three, a lot of times you can guess, and if you can guess, you know, hallelujah, guess it. So it's negative three to three. Okay. And then, um, and then now, if they asked me to set it up, there would be the setup and I would be totally done, right? And so, um, but I'm going to go on and I'm going to integrate it just for the practice of integrating it. And so what you would need to do to integrate this is you would need to FOIL that together. Um, and so you would need to say that 9 minus x squared uh, squared is equal to 9 minus x squared times 9 minus x squared which is equal to 9 times 9 is 81 and minus 9x squared, another minus 9x squared, it's really cold in my house, plus um, not negative times a negative, right, is a positive um, x to the fourth. Add the exponents 2 plus 2. So this gives me 81 minus 18x squared plus x to the fourth. So my volume, so my first step, I'm leaving off my pi. I won't make any more jokes about pi and um, wanting ice cream with it or anything like that um, because uh, I know how, um, how old those jokes get, but I can't help myself. I mean, every time I think about pi, I think, oh, I love pi, I just really do, so yummy. Okay, uh, I decided to write it in descending order, but I didn't have to, you know, you do you. Um, I, I am not uh, particularly crazy uh, uh, about that you have to have parentheses there, but I have, I have friends that are, and they would say, you definitely need parentheses here. And uh, your book definitely writes parentheses there. But to me, these are my symbol. And I think anything between my symbol is what I'm trying to integrate. And so, um, and so anyway, so x to the fifth over five minus 18x to the third over three plus 81x. And we're going to integrate that from negative three to three. And, um, and I'm not forgetting my pi. So if you think I'm forgetting in my pi, I'm not. There it is. I'm not forgetting it. And, um, and so I'm going to plug in 3 here. So pi. So this is the upper bound is 3 raised to the fifth over 5 um, minus 18 and 3 raised to the third over 3 plus 81 times 3. I'm going to put parentheses there. Anytime you substitute, parentheses are implied minus, and then it's the lower bound, and so that's going to be negative 3 to the fifth over 5 minus 18 negative 3 to the third over 3 plus 81 oh, uh, with evaluated at negative 3. And so there we have a lot of parentheses. And, um, and and so now I'm going to go put this in my calculator is my is my plan. And um, and so I'm not going to put the pi in my calculator. 
and I'm going to start off right here. And so I have the fraction and I have three raised to the fifth. And then downstairs I have the five, but I didn't somehow get down there. And then minus, and I know that I could have, uh, I could have reduced 18 uh, over three, but I'm not leaving that as my final answer. And so don't get harsh on me for not reducing it even though you might feel that I get harsh on you for not reducing stuff, it's only when it's in your final answer and you haven't reduced it. So if you don't want to reduce that right now, um, you can put it in like I just did. And the reason I did was because I was thinking about how cold I was and not thinking about reducing. And so, um, so I get 648 over 5. So right here I'm having pi, and then um, I had my up bound, and I get 648 over 5 minus my low bound and then now I'm going to go find my low bound and all I have to do to find my low bound is change my threes to negative. And I get ne negative 648 over over 5. And, um, and then, um, so they're equal to one another. And so uh, that becomes a plus, right? And so my answer here is going to be uh, 648 over five uh, times two, <laughs> because they're equal to one another. So um, a crazy answer, but 1296 over five pi. So that's my volume. And I'm like, okay, hot diggity dog. So we did a lovely job on that. One thing that I could have used on this is that uh, because this was perfectly symmetric uh, with respect here to the, um, the y-axis and I was rotating around the line y equals 9, uh, I could have used symmetry. And, and, um, and I could have just done instead of from negative three to three, I could have done from zero to, um, to three for X and because it was perfectly symmetric with respect to the Y axis. And, um, and then I could have doubled my answer. And, and a lot of times uh, I'll see, and that would have been a little bit easier, not a lot easier, a little bit easier. So this part would have been the same, this part would have been the same, except for I would have had a zero there. Then this part would have been the same, but I would have had zero here. And then I would have doubled my answer. And so sometimes um, I don't use symmetry when I could have used symmetry, but there's a couple of problems that the, the way they look, um, the first time I looked at them, I thought there was symmetry. Uh, and I solved it with symmetry and I looked in the back of the book and I have the wrong answer and I'm like, what the heck? And I look at it again and it's not symmetric. And so, and I was like, oh, I see why that's not symmetric. And so, um, so you have to be careful, I guess, is what I'm saying. When you, when you go and you use symmetry, you have to make sure that you really do truly have the symmetry to use it. So sometimes, um, sometimes I, I, I guess I skip out on it. Okay. So the next ones that we're going to look at is um, when, you, when um, you make your slices that you have a washer. And, um, and what that happens is if you were trying to find the volume of just the ceramic on this, that if I was to slice this, it is, um, it, it has a, um, you know, it has a non-solid, it's air <laughs> in here. And that thing, that's called a washer. And this is what a washer looks like. And so um, when you're trying to find the area of a washer, I remember that one of my son's friends was over and they were doing their, their homework. And, um, and he had the idea to find the area of this part right here in your washer, that part right there. And it seemed like a good idea, uh, even to me, would be to subtract big R and little r. Um, but friends, that doesn't work. Um, and so basically what you need to do is that you need to, um, I'm going to try to draw the big circle and I'm going to draw it solid, right? And what you need to do 
is you need to find the area of the big circle. And so in the area of the big circle is uh, pi r squared. And then what you need to do is you need to subtract out. So if you're trying to find this region here, um, which is the washer part, you need to subtract out. So I'm trying to draw the little circle and I'm trying to draw the solid and this has a radius of r. Uh, and then you need to subtract out pi little r squared. So it is not r, big R minus little r. Um, now you can factor out a pi, and then it is big R squared minus little r squared, but it that is different from, that is not equal to, that is not equal to big R um, squared, big R minus little r squared. They're not equal to one another. I'll put the pi out here. And so it's not because I didn't write the pi or anything like that. They're not equal uh, to one another. If you were to FOIL this out over here, what you would get, I'll put the pi, you would get r squared, right? Write it twice, r uh, minus r times r minus r. I know you're like big r minus little r. So r times r is r squared. And then you get minus big R little r, minus another big R little r, and then plus R squared. And so you can see that if I was to FOIL that out, this would be minus 2 big R little r, and then um, this is plus R squared. And so people do this, and they say that they're equal to one another. And now that I foiled it out, you can see, oh, well, they do have r squared in common, uh, but that one doesn't have a minus 2r, r, big r, little r, and it, it's not plus, it's minus. And so um, so they're not equal to one another. So you can't write that. And But that's the most common boo-boo, I'll just tell you, um, is to do that. And I, I just remember that that little friend um, that was over and uh, was showing us how to, to find the area of these. We were finding the area of these um, in their homework and not doing anything else with them, just finding the area of them. And he had that idea and I looked at it and I thought, oh, that's a good idea. But then I realized, wait a minute, wait a minute. And so then we started drawing these pictures and realizing, okay, what we really have to do. Okay, so here is the basic technique for the washer. It's really the same as it was for the disc. Um, if your rotation is about the x-axis or parallel to the x-axis, then you need to have your equation solve for y. You need to make graphs of your things. You need to draw your typical r and your little r, and then you're going to set it up, and you're going to set it up like this so that your area of each one of your, instead of drawing out a disc, you're going to draw out something that has a hole in it. And I wish I would have gotten a washer from the garage, but I didn't think to grab one. Um, this disc is sort of a washer because it has a hole in it, right? And so, and we're finding the area of this part and then uh, going by the, multiplying by the thickness. And so, so that's kind of the story. So you want to identify what R is and what um, big R and little R is, and then you're going to put it in this formula. And the reason this formula works is because you're finding the area of that washer, just like I just did here. And, um, and the factory, Factoring out the pi makes it nice. Same story when you're going around the y-axis, except for your variables need to be solved for x, and uh, you want to sketch, and, um, and then it's going to be dy instead of dx. Okay, we're going to try, and I hope it's not 2, uh, but it's not. It's, it's only, uh, I hope it's not 2, but it is 2, so I don't know why I was grateful. <laughs> and so, because I'm I was done doing them, but... Um, and I, boy, on this, this, I've drawn a lot of these and, uh, but I told you on your test that I would give you the graphs of some of them to save time, not because I don't think you can graph it to save time. And particularly if it's something hard to graph, I would want to give you the graph of that too. So we're going to graph, graph this. It's y equals x squared and, um, and y equals x and, um, and I'm not going to pick as many points because, you know, I've graphed those several times today and um, I might need some points. And so uh, if I need some points, I'll come and get them. And, um, and so, and right now I'm already saying, darn, I wish I wouldn't have said that I wasn't going to pick points because now my graph, it wasn't going to be nice. Oh, how did the, that go off? What did I do to make that go off to go dark? 
I don't know what I did. Whatever I did, I'm going to try not to do it again. Okay. Zero, zero, one, one, two, two, right? Uh, zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one. And, uh, and then I'm going to sketch this. So um, I'm going to put one right here. I'm going to put one over further because I can already see the handwriting on the wall of where these are going to intersect one another. One over here. I'm going to put negative one over here. And that same distance, one, is going to be right up here. So when I plot this, this is 0, 0, and uh, 1, 1, and 2, 2 is here. And so that's this line right here. And then 0, 0 is here. And then 1, 1 is here. And negative 1, 1 is here. And then I'm going to carefully graph in this parabola. And I'm going to laugh at myself on my poor drawing of it. But this is the reason that they kicked me out of art school. When I was just about to make my, my, um, my masterpiece drawings. Okay. So I have got it drawn. This is the region that's being trapped. And they said it was going around the x-axis. So I know that my integral for my volume will be dx, right? Because it's going around the x-axis. It's going around the y-axis, it'll be dy, okay? And now uh, I want to draw my radius. And so I don't right now know that it's a washer other than it says that it's a washer right here. Uh, but I wanna show you how you're gonna know that it's a washer without it saying right there that it's a washer. You're gonna go on the axis of rotation. So here I am on the axis of rotation. And when I, when I put my dot and I'm going to draw my, um, my radius, when I start and I draw my radius, I am not immediately in solid. I am in a, the air. And then I go through um, um, a curve and through solid to another curve. That makes a washer. And so that when I, if I was to draw this in three dimension, which you know that you would just be laughing, right? If I rotated this around, when I, when I pull that out, it'll have a hole in the center because that's where that air is. So it will be a disc, right? When I pull that out with a hole in the center, that's what makes it a washer. What makes it have a hole in the center is that there's air right there and it's not the solid. So I want to just show you the picture that we had from this one. So when I got on the axis of rotation, all of this was solid and I went immediately into solid. On this one right here, and I got on the axis of rotation, I went immediately into solid. That's what made it a disc. On this one right here, uh, I got on the axis of rotation and I went immediately into my solid. That's what makes it a disc. What makes it a washer is that when I got on my axis of rotation, and I started off towards my, my curve that I've drawn, I'm in air. I'm not in the place that I said that's the region that was trapped. And so that's what makes it a washer. So I say to myself, oh, it's a washer. So I need to identify R, and R is the distance from um, the uh, axis of rotation all the way through the solid to the other curve. R is the furthest distance that you have, which because I'm going around the X axis is just our curves that we have. We don't have to uh, worry about anything else because this distance right here is called Y equals X. That's my big R. I'm gonna um, notate it as big R, right? I'm gonna put right here, this is big R is what that is, right? And, um, and so, and that is going from the axis of rotation, which is the x-axis, to uh, the line y equals x. So big R is x. Little r, on the other hand, is the inside. And I thought I had a purple pen here uh, to do a different color. I don't like to do pen on my notes, but I don't even have it. So it's not even here. And that's the distance that's from the axis of rotation to the inner curve is what that is. That's little r right here. 
And remember that that distance is called y from the x-axis to any point is called y. And in this case, y equals x to the second because it's hitting the parabola curve. So little r is equal to x to the second. So then my formula for my volume is pi, because I decided it was a washer, r squared minus r squared dx. Most common error that people do is instead of writing r squared minus r squared, they write big R minus little r quantity squared. And that is a big boo-boo. It's not true. And, um, and so um, if you like, I could square these pieces or I'm just gonna stuff them in there. So my volume would be pi on the outside, the integral, and then I'm gonna put parentheses um, r squared, which was x, minus little r squared, which was x squared, and then dx. And I tried to put the square on the outside, but because I had the square on the inside, I forgot to put the square on the outside. So this is big r squared and little r squared dx. And now I'm gonna integrate that. And um, this is gonna go from, uh, and I got the pi out there, so I don't mess up the pi. And this is gonna go from x is zero right here, all the way to where they intersected one another, which was x at one. If, if I could not, if I didn't have a drawing good enough to know where they intersected, then I could have solved to find where they intersected, right? Intersect, inter intersection, right? It's where y equals x intersects y equals x squared. And so those are the two curves that we're having hit one another. And so if you didn't know that it was zero to one, which we know that it is zero to one, but if you didn't know it was zero to one, you could solve it. They're, e they're both equal to y, so that must mean they're equal to one another. So that's x equals x squared. And then how you solve that, it's quadratic, is you get zero on one side. So that would be x squared, take away x. So I'm gonna take away x, both sides, equals zero. And then you factor it, it's the F word. So you get x times x minus one equals zero. And then you set the pieces to zero and you get x equals zero and x minus one equals zero, which means x equals one. And so if you can't see the intersection points from your graph, you can always find them by setting your curves equal to one another and then, um, and then finding them. Uh, did I need to do that? And the answer is no, I could, do, I could see that from my graph, but I wanted you to know what to do if you couldn't see that from your graph, right? And so um, if you just needed to set it up, it's done. There it is, it's beautiful, go on to the next one. Um, and so I'll put a line, uh, there's the setup. But if I need to integrate it, then I'm gonna to have to fix it up a bit. Zero to one, this is x squared minus x to the fourth dx. Again, my friends, my lovely friends that I love so much would say, you need parentheses right here or brackets right there. And I have to admit that if you look in the back of the book, they have them. But I kind of think of this in here as implied parentheses because I think it makes it look messier. Um, and so, um, but I'm, I'm with you um, if you want to be um, really, 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 really professional. Um, x to the third over three minus uh, x to the fifth over five and I'm gonna evaluate that from zero to one. And so they make, uh, this one was real easy to integrate and the bounds are really easy to, um, to figure out what they are. So I'm gonna have one third minus one fifth uh, minus zero all times pi. And that's what my volume is gonna be equal. And if that comes out negative, uh, then I'm gonna say, what the heck, where did I make a mistake? And, um, and that happens to me. And, um, and I feel lucky when it does, because when it does, that gives me a chance to fix it. Two pi over 15, trying not to forget my pi. No jokes about it though. Okay, one more to do, and then I am going to go and see what I have to eat at my house, and I hope it's pie. And, um, but I know there's no pie. I, where could I get some pie? So this one here, 
Um, I gave you the three dimensional picture of it and you can see that they've made the slice in it. And so they've drawn to the best of their ability, the three dimensional picture, and they've drawn the typical, um, the typical disc or washer in there. And so you can see that it's a washer, but I'm going to show you that when we draw it, that even without this and without them telling me it's a washer, I could have figured out that it was a washer myself. So I have to graph y equals sine of x, and oh my gosh, are you serious? And I have to graph y equals cosine of x. And I wanna know where those crazy things intersect, but lucky for me, they said to me, hey, you only need to graph from, from zero to pi over four. So I am gonna pick, pick a few points because I can't help myself, and I know that I'm just old fashioned that way. I'm gonna pick zero. And the sine of zero is zero. And I'm going to pick pi over four. And the sine of pi over four is the square root of two over two. And if you don't know that, you can use your calculator. So you have to make sure your calculator is in radians. My calculator is in radians. And then the sine of pi over four. Um, I could use my phone to turn on my heater. And see, I get the square root of two over two. And man, I mean, my house must be 50 degrees in here and I'm freezing. I'm shivering, but I should get a jacket on or a sweater. But the reason I don't have a jacket on or a sweater is because I wasn't cold before because I had been jumping on the trampoline. Oh, it, it is in the 50s in my house. And so I guess I will allow myself to go into the 60s. How did it get so cold in this house? I don't know. Okay, and then I'm going to graph cosine. And I, I know the general gist of how they look. I'm gonna graph zero, I get one, and I'm gonna graph uh, pi over four. And the cosine of pi over four is also the square root of two over two, which is um, the square root of two over two is not quite one. I think it's about a 1.7, excuse me, 0 0.707 is what it is, 0 .0, 0 0.707, I can't say that, but not quite one. Okay, so I'm gonna plot both of these. And we're going to be going around the line y equals negative 1 down here. And so I'm just kind of keep that in mind. So sine is 0, 0, and then over pi over 4. So, um, you know, that is right here exactly. And it's really important to be exact here. And then we're going to go up uh, 0.7. And so that distance right there is actually... Um, Three fourths. Remember, my son says that pi is um, three when you're when you're an engineer and you're just rounding. When you're trying to be exact, it's not. But um, which is 0.75. So actually, the same distance. This is 0.7, and so basically the same distance. So I'm going to go up basically the same distance, and so this is my sine. And then my cosine starts up here at 0, 1, which is a little bit higher because that, that height was 0.7, so which is a little bit higher. And then um, it's going to come down here and meet here at the pi over 4. And so it... And they said that we were going to go from x is 0 to pi over 4. So this gives us x is 0 here and then stopping here because I only have, I mean, I could draw this line there, but I want to know where all of the curves, and so it's just trapped. The region that's trapped is this region right here is what's trapped. And then they're going to rotate it around the line y equals negative 1 right here, y equals negative 1. That's the line that it's going to be rotated around. So to me, I would be saying that y equals negative 1, this is what I would be saying to myself, is parallel to the x-axis so that when I do my integral, it'll be dx. That's what I, you know, if it's parallel to the x-axis, then it'll be dx. And that means your equations need to all be solved for y. Hot diggity dog, my equations are solved for y. 
if if I was saying that it needed to be dx and my equations needed to be solved for y and they know and they're not solved for y and they're too difficult to solve for y, then I would know that I was in the next section um, and we're going to have something to do about that. So if you're saying how would you handle that, well we're going to have a story about that. Okay, then what you do is I want to decide if I'm doing a disk or if I'm doing a washer because I need to have dx for my disk or my washer and um, my equations are solved for y so I'm all perfect on doing a disk or a washer but now I need to know which one it is and how you know which one it is is that you go to the axis of rotation so there I am on the axis of rotation and then you go, go towards your curve and if you have air um, I'm not going through solid right now you know it's a washer so because this is air right here right this is air as I'm going through the the middle of it uh, I'm saying to myself oh it's a washer so I'm going to make a note it's a washer when it's a washer I need to know what r is and what big r is and what little r is so how you draw your big r is you go all the way through to the other side okay and um your r is not just your cosine curve because it's hitting the cosine curve um, because this distance right here from the y from the x-axis to here so the whole thing is r the whole distance is r but this little part right here so the whole thing is r and um, i don't know how to denote that without um, making a mess on it but this whole distance is r and this distance from the x-axis to this height is y equals cosine of x. And I want it in terms of x, so I want to call it cosine. And so what I have basically going, I wanted to tell people what r was, but what I have basically going is that this whole thing is r, right? And, um, and I notice that that whole thing equals cosine of x plus this distance right here and since that's down at negative one this distance right here distance is positive is one and so the the whole thing is what my capital r is and this distance right here just to the x-axis from my curve is called cosine of x and then plus one more so this r right here is equal to the cosine of x plus one that's what capital R is equal to. And so in this, this whole thing is capital R. And so there it is. I'm going to draw a lowercase r. And the lowercase r, it really goes with this. It's really here to here. It's really right there. Uh, but since I have this other stuff labeled and I don't want to erase it, uh, I'm going to just draw another r over here. And so the, the R, the little R, and I'm not drawing the one that goes with this particular R, but just so that you can see. And so the one that goes with this particular R, the little R that goes with it is this one, right? But I'm just drawing this one so that you can see there's another little R there. And um, this distance from the axis of rotation to the inner curve is called little R. And the distance from the x-axis from the x-axis to your curve that's called y and in this case it's hitting the sine curve so that's y equals sine of x that's what that little distance is plus one right because we have this distance being one so little r is equal to sine of x plus one so um, because i decided that it was a washer i'm going to put the pi on the outside and then that's r squared minus little r squared dx. And now I have found what big R is and what little r is. I have my little lovely pictures here. Uh, remember that the distance from the x-axis to a curve is called y. And uh, I wasn't going from the x-axis to that curve. I was going um, at something other than the x-axis. And so when they told you, told you it's just your function, it is just your function if you're going around the x-axis. But if you're going around something other than the x-axis, you have to be a little bit clever. And so we have to be a little bit clever here. And so my volume, I haven't got bounds on here yet, but I will. 
um, is going to be pi. And then the integral, and this is cosine of x plus 1 squared minus sine of x uh, plus 1 quantity squared dx. So there is um, my setup, other than I haven't got bounds, and so I don't have it yet. Um, once I get bounds on there, I'll be in business cooking with gas. And so we are going to go, we're going to draw all of these um, big R's and little R's. They go together because there's a little R that goes with this one. There's a big R that goes with this one, right? And uh, they all go together. And those go from um, zero all the way out here to pi over four. So they actually were giving you the bounds right here, zero to pi over four. And now I have to integrate that, and but if the setup's done. So if they asked me to set up only, there would be my answer. I know I said set up only, but I've been practicing doing both, setting them up and, um, and then integrating them. This one's harder to integrate. Um, you do have to first start off by foiling that together, cosine x plus 1 times cosine x uh, plus 1. And so right here, I'm going to do that up here. So cosine x plus 1 times cosine x plus 1, just keeping it out of my work. When I multiply that together, I get cosine x, um, cosine squared x, right, plus a cosine x plus another cosine of x, 1 times cosine of x, plus 1. And so I get cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x plus 1. So if I'm going to integrate this, I have to multiply that together is what I have to do because I can't integrate um, a product. And so, um, and I have something squared. I can't integrate that. Um, I could try to do a U substitution. That would be a possibility on some of them and maybe would work. It wouldn't, a U substitution wouldn't work on this one. But um, because if I let U be cosine X plus one, then when I take the derivative, I would get negative sine X and I don't have time sine X here. So I would just be kind of, uh, that would be, make a mess. So, um, so I have my integral here from zero to pi over four. I'm writing the integral sign because I haven't found the integral yet, but I did find that this is cosine squared X plus two cosine of X plus one by the same pattern. Um, I'm going to multiply the sign together. So instead it would be um, sine squared X plus two sine of X plus one. And then I'm going to distribute the negative. And um, I hesitate to do that in, um, in one step. And so if I was in class, I would try to do it in one step because I would be having a time crunch and I would be trying to hurry. And, um, and then half the time when I try to hurry and I do things under time crunch without showing my work, um, I make a mistake. And uh, maybe you don't make a mistake, but I do. Well, I was hoping that something great would happen with the uh, um, cosine squared x minus sine squared x. I was hoping it was going to be cosine squared x plus sine squared x. That was my hope when I was up here, um, and but it's not, unfortunately. And, um, and so the ones do cancel out, plus one, minus one, so they're gone. Uh, but this isn't one of my six that I know how to integrate. And, um, and so I'm going to have to use um, a trig uh, identity in order to, um, to integrate that. That's, that's what's going to, that's what's going to be necessary. Um, and I don't know if you, if it was one of the ones I listed and I don't think I have, have the paper from uh, last time. So I don't know if this identity is one of the nine. And so since I don't know if this identity is one of the nine, I'm going to show you how I'm going to get it. Uh, and, so, and so the idea is I can't integrate that because it's not one of my six trigs. I can integrate this because it is one of my six trigs. 
The ones are going to go away, so I'm not even worried about them, but I could integrate them anyway. I can't integrate this because it's not one of my, my six. And, um, and so, but I can't integrate that. And so it's these two that I can't integrate. And I was trying to remember the identity. It's not one I use very often, so I don't have it in my mind. Um, and so, um, and I, what, I wasn't sure. I don't think it's one of the nine I said for you to memorize. And so, but I want to look at cosine squared X minus sine squared X because I think that they're actually nicer. Now we know, and I asked you to memorize, that cosine squared x, I'm gonna put parentheses for it, minus, and then sine squared x, I asked you to memorize that that was equal to, um, was it one half, uh, one, and then plus cosine two x, is that right? And then, um, I'm missing a parenthesis there, so I'll put it. And uh, and then this one over here, or you can distribute the one half. And then the, the sine of x, I have the minus here, but the sine of x was uh, one half, and then it was one um, minus cosine of two x. And so what I have here is I have half uh, plus um, half, cosine of 2x, maybe you have yours memorized that way, and then I'm going to distribute a minus half, so I have minus half, and then a minus times a minus is a plus half cosine of 2x. So the halves go away, half minus half is zero, and then I get one half cosine of 2x plus one half cosine of 2x is one whole cosine of 2x. And that's an identity, and I'm not sure if this identity is on the paper. And I know that this identity is on the paper, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And I was hoping that's what I would have, but that's not what I ended up having. I had this. So I can replace those two with cosine of 2x. And good news on that, I can integrate cosine of 2x. So that's the, the, good, the good news on it. So when I fix this up, I'm running out of room and I'm cold and I haven't had anything to eat. And so right here, cosine, but I'm done complaining. So when I put those together using trig, I'm gonna get cosine of 2x which I can integrate, and then I'm going to get plus 2 cosine of x, and then the 1's are going to cancel, and then I'm going to get minus 2 sine of x dx. And now I have three pieces that I can integrate, and I'm going to evaluate them from 0 to pi over 4. Okay, so when I integrate um, cosine, I get sine and it doesn't change signs. So this is gonna be my uh, antiderivative and I'm gonna try not to lose my pi as well. So my antiderivative is sine of two x over two plus two, and then the antiderivative of this is sine of x. And then the minus two, and then the antiderivative of this is negative cosine of x and I'm gonna evaluate that from zero to pi over four. And, um, and right here, that negative negative is a positive, and um, I am so short on room um, that I don't, want to, I, I don't want to skip that step, but I don't wanna to have to write it again. Um, but I feel like, um, <laughs> but, I, um, but alas, um, what I'll do is this. So when I do my upper bound, when I put in pi over four, uh, so this is gonna be the sine of two times pi over four, all divided by two, I'm gonna put that in my calculator, plus two times the sine of pi over four. And I don't know why I wrote that so small. And uh, you're like, don't erase it, uh, just go with it, you're okay. And then I'm gonna write plus, is what I'm gonna write. And then I'm gonna write two times the cosine of pi over four. And then um, we have that, and then we have, and I don't say minus zero. 
Um, and so uh, because it's not minus zero and the reason is it is true that the sine of zero is zero and it is true that the sine of zero is zero but it is not true that the cosine of zero is not zero the cosine of zero is actually one and so um, I need to have minus here and the one the only one that I need because it's minus the um, minus the lower bound all I need is two, which is positive because this is a negative times a negative is a positive cosine of zero. The others are, are zero. And I would have maybe wrote them out and put them in my calculator, but I'm out of room. Okay, so I'm not going to do that because I'm out of room, right? And so here I'm going to have a fraction and I'm going to have, and you can do these by your head. And any of my colleagues would, that would be looking at my video, uh, 2 times pi over 4, and saying you're doing it on your calculator, I divided by 5 there instead of 4, um, I would be, um, uh, uh, um, forgive me, is what I would be saying. Okay, and then plus, and so, um, and so could I do it in my head if I wanted to? And the answer is um, no, I'm cold and I'm hungry and I'm tired. And so uh, the possibility of me getting the right answer is zero. Plus two times, and my calculator is in radians, thank goodness. Uh, and that's uh, pi, ooh, what did I put in there? Uh, I got absolute value going, how did I get that? Pi divided by four. Okay. And so when I did that, oh man, it's ugly. Look how ugly that is. That gives me stress. And then this is minus two, right? And so it's this and then minus two. And uh, but that's so ugly. I just want to put minus two right here in my calculator. And so there's my answer. My volume equals minus three plus four square roots of two over two pi. Um, man, I don't remember the answer being that ugly. If the answer is not that ugly, when I go look at it in the back of the book, because this is number 24, I'll have to make the video again. And because I have to just make the whole video start to finish, I don't know how to edit. Um, maybe I'd have to call Kevin to edit this. This is so long. Okay. Uh, I hope it's right. Um, everybody pray. Okay. Let me see how I stop. Stop. Goodbye.